Thank you, gentlemen. Um, yeah, so originally I wanted to do this presentation and I wanted to say, um, you know, how do we just stop reverse engineers? But so basically, the really short part of the talk is um, I can speak from experience as a reverse engineer, you can't stop us. Since you're um, basically you're making an application to do something, as long as that application actually executes that code and actually does that, it's going to be able to be reverse engineered because you're wanting it to run on like you know a client's actual device. So since it's actually going to run once, it's going to work for someone else who wants to um, you know steal that kind of code or or try and figure out what kind of protection you're doing. So you can't stop it, but you can definitely slow it down. You know, set up roadblocks, set up um, you know different kinds of speed bumps and whatnot to make people uh, not want to do this, not want to waste their time, and that, that kind of stuff. Um, so basically, just a quick who am I? Uh, I'm a security engineer here at Lookout. What does that mean? That means I get to work on like client side and server side detection stuff. Uh, lots of reverse engineering, lots of tearing down malware, um, getting to see like why are people doing certain things? Are they doing anything unique? How can we detect this stuff earlier? Um, I basically grew up uh, programming and reversing. It's just basically a big challenge. So it's great because if you love puzzles, then you're probably going to love reverse engineering. And you basically get to do the anti-engineer, which is, you know, how is someone, if someone's doing good coding practices, you get to solve that problem of, well, oh, this is a great MVC design, and because they did that, and I'm looking at it in reverse, like, here's going to be their view, here's the controller, here's their model, all that kind of stuff. Um, also, I go by diff, because OG Tim is sitting in the back, so I had to become different Tim. Um, and I know I've spoken at Black Hat 2011, 2012. Um, this talk specifically is going to be somewhat more high level. I did a low level talk of how to actually break uh, reverse engineer applications, like the tools that people are using. Uh, just to nuance that, what happens when you break those tools is then people are extremely motivated to fix their tools and then break your application because you were doing something against them. It's kind of like, but well, you went up to me, so I'm going to one up you. So this is kind of the, as a developer, what can you do to try and slow people down, opposed to the you know, the reverse engineer trying to break other reverse engineers. So just to quickly go over what we talked about at the last meetup, we basically discussed like what is reversing, how can you reverse engineer an Android application. Um, so what is reversing? Like, what is, it's basically the concept of I want to find out what an application does because I got this file from someone and I just don't know what it does. Or how are they doing it? It's a really cool game and maybe someone uh, doesn't want to actually go through the process of developing their own game, so they're going to say, have this person do this with the physics engine, like what values did they use, what constants did they use, what's the secret password to get to the next level because I'm too bad at this game. Uh, so how do we do that? Basically, what do you do that with? You're going to do that with a bunch of off-the-shelf open source tools, or maybe you're going to make your own. You're going to be looking at bytecode um, or just basically decompiled structures and whatnot. So that's why you can reverse engineer as, as a good person, I would say. You know, maybe you want to cheat at a game. Uh, you know, as a bad person, maybe you want to reverse engineer something because you want to inject malware into it, or you want to find exploits. And I say exploit developers are all bad. Maybe they're trying to submit that to a bug bounty program. But basically, they want to find weaknesses in your application, and they need to reverse engineer it to figure that kind of stuff out. Uh, essentially, what an Android application is, it's an ABK file, which is a jar, which is essentially the same as a zip. Uh, inside of it, we have the manifest, which basically declares to Android uh, what, what are your activities, what are your services, what permissions are you trying to request, that type of stuff. Uh, and then inside there's a classes.dex file. So if you know what a jar is, that contains your classes, uh, which are basically each class when you're writing code in, in say, uh, Eclipse is going to be compiled into a class. Uh, a dex file is basically a uh, bundled version of all those classes. It's a little more specific than that. That's the generic gist of it. Um, and then you can have your native libraries, which is essentially a shared ELF library, uh, usually written in C, C++ type code, and that gets compiled in there as well. Um, so when we're developing an application, we have all these resources on the left. So we have our code, we have our XML, we have our images, our layout files, all that kind of stuff. Some magic happens with the Android SDK, and we get our app. Uh, basically what that is, is Java C, which is the compiler for Java, is going to translate your Java code into Java bytecode. And then DX, which is the Dalvik compiler, uh, basically converts it to Dalvik code. The main difference being uh, Dalvik's optimized for an Android device. Uh, it's going to be optimized for a mobile device, so it uses, or supposedly uses less memory, uh, uses registers as opposed to just objects that are typeless. Um, so when we're taking our code, we can actually compile it using Java C. This goes to DX. 
which then gives us our class of that text file. So if we're a reverse engineer, how would we want to go up here? Basically, we're going to use something like box molly or text jar, and then combine that with a, uh, a Java decompiler, which would be like JD GUI or JAZ. Uh, box molly basically gives you Jasmine type output, which makes it human readable. Uh, and then text to jar essentially tries to do the exact opposite of this process. It tries to translate your downloaded bytecodes into Java bytecodes, so then you can just use your normal Java stack of tools to analyze an application. Um, XML, so this is going to be like your Android manifest uh, or your resource files. That basically gets compiled using the resource compactor. I think it's AAPT. And you're actually going to be able to use AAPT to decompile this file. So you're going to get a, uh, a bundled resource file that you can't view because it's compacted. Uh, and you can run it through AAPT or APK tool, which essentially wraps this. Uh, so you can basically then see what the XML was when the developer had written it originally. Uh, same with these XML files. It's basically going to be compiled down into your r.java file. So if you've ever done Android programming, you know you have that r file that sometimes Eclipse just hates you because you imported the wrong file and you got to go through all those weird steps. Uh, that's where it points all those resources. You have weird constants that basically say like r.string dot this one, and you use this usually uh, if you're doing good coding concepts and you have your application translated. Uh, again, it's the same tool. It's going to be Android application tracker tool or APK tool. Uh, basically does the same thing as the uh, manifest file. So then you also have your images and your assets. Those are literally just going to be zipped in. So you, if you unzip a file, you're going to see an assets directory and then you have that kind of stuff. Um, and you also have inside like res raw, that's usually where raw resources such as like an elf file or maybe a configuration file or maybe if you have you know, files that you're loading for a game that there's going to be usually stored in there. <coughs> So just go ahead and unzip it to zip file. Um, and then the jar signature. This is basically what makes you, a developer, able to upgrade your application, submit it to the market, and nobody else can do that because they hopefully will never know your password and they will never hopefully have your private key. Um, this one's basically just using the normal jar signer. You sign your jar, someone modifies it, that signature is not going to check out. You find a way to make that into a private key again. Let us know. It'd be really cool. We'll hire you, and probably a lot of people might try and hunt you down. Uh, but you can use the key tool to basically print out like what is the certificate, what are the, the values of the certificate, who actually signed this. Uh, you can use your Android debug signer if you want. But if you do that, a lot of people can actually then recreate your signer, which would be a bad thing. You could do something like an upgrade attack or upgrade your application to do anything that they want. Uh, so as a reverse engineer, we would want to go the other way. And basically, that's using all those tools that we just discussed. Uh, you know, unzipping, using box Molly, using Dexajar, all that kind of good stuff. So uh, when I was trying to write the slides for this talk, I was trying to think of, you know, why would you want to slow down reverse engineers? Most of the time, it's because people think the pirates are trying to steal all their stuff. Um, there's going to be probably uh, some people who just, you know, maybe it's a competitor who's a little bit shady. They don't want to do innovation. Maybe they're just going to try and look at your code. Um, those people are probably going to be highly motivated and maybe highly skilled, or they're going to be enough to skilled enough that they're going to go find someone who's even more skilled than them. You might not be able to stop them because if someone has enough patience and enough time, they can usually break almost anything that you can put in front of them. Um, but we can stop pirates. Pirates are just an interesting breed. Uh, basically, it's usually broken up into two small groups, especially for Android this period of time. There's usually a small group of people. Um, you may have seen these names, you may not have. Lohan, he's the guy who basically made the tool anti-LVL. Uh, Chelpus, I destroyed his name. Apparently, he's a European cracker. Um, Lohan is from Russia. Survive is from Spain. And these are the guys that you end up seeing actually like doing really interesting things when trying to pirate applications. They're going through a lot of hoops, trying to just do really innovative solutions. And uh, Chelpus actually made the um, Lucky Patcher. So, what these guys have done is, is they love the challenge of reverse engineering so much that they've tried to make a tool to automate it for them so that they can basically just you know, attack these problems uh, head on. They made a tool that just does all the hard work for them, and they're just you know, sitting on top of that. Uh, there's basically a large group of people who then use the output from these small group. Uh, I, I want to basically call them scripty kitties because most of them don't understand much. They might not even know how to code. Some of them might know how to code. But they basically know that I need to use these tools by these other guys or figure out how 